Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Danbury Hattricks Hockey on the Under Reviews NHL Simulated FPHL Season. I'm Casey Bryant, bringing you exclusive live coverage of tonight's game as the Danbury Hattricks take on the Port Huron Prowlers. Once more, I want to give a shout out to our broadcasting partners who can't be with us here tonight. Jack O'Mara continuing to hunker down in quarantine back home in New Milford, and Zach McGinnis. Well, it remains to be seen whether or not his computer, his Commodore 64, has the capacity to stream live events such as this one. We'll try to communicate with him via smoke signals or carrier pigeon to see if he's doing all right. Nevertheless, we have a hockey game ahead for you tonight between the Hattricks and Port Huron Prowlers, which, surprise, surprise, went into overtime last night for the third time this season in three such meetings. Phil Bronner capped off the game with the game winner, a wrist shot from between the hash marks. It was a beauty of a goal for Phil, and good redemption for him, considering earlier in that game he had bumped into his own netminder, which allowed the third such goal for the Port Huron Prowlers. So good redemption there for the alternate captain, number eight. Danbury will have to mind Royal Road in front of their own net as the Port Huron Prowlers really took them to school when it came to getting those passes out in front of the net. They really exploited the NHL scoring strategy of passes from the corners out to the front of the net. The Hattricks will certainly have to tighten up defensively in front of their netminder Tom McGuckin getting another start here tonight for the Hattricks. Opposite him for the Port Huron Prowlers will be Chris Paulin who got the first two starts of the year for Port Huron back on October 25th and 26th. Had himself a pair of overtime wins at Danbury Arena but tonight we are out in Michigan at McMorrin Arena. Now you might be asking yourself, well that seems like a difficult trip to make overnight as they were in Danbury last night at Danbury Arena and they have to drive all the way out to Port Huron. Well it is amazing, they have only the finest in transportation that the virtual world can purchase. Uh, they, we spare no expense here with the Danbury Hattricks organization. We can transmit those ones and zeros from point A to point B in just the blink of an eye. It really is remarkable. Now you might be asking yourself, in a real life scenario that seems like an awfully cruel road trip to make overnight. Playing in Danbury Friday night then having to drive 12 hours if you're to remain in the United States all the way out to Port Huron just to play another game the next night and to that I say yes it is and whoever is in charge of the scheduling committee for the FPHL really should be shaking their head at this moment right now wondering how that should be physiologically possible nevertheless we're getting set for the start of Danbury Hattricks hockey here on the under reviews YouTube channel be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for all future streaming events here on the under reviews channel and we're going to get set for puck drop here in just a moment. Stay with us. From Port Huron, Michigan's McMorrin Arena, it's time for Danbury Hattricks Hockey as they are on the road tonight taking on the Port Huron Prowlers in round four of the season series. Three rounds have gone to extra time. We'll see if more is in store tonight. Tom McGuckin, who comes in unbeaten in this simulation, has two regulation wins against Mentor and an overtime win last night under his belt. Across the way is Chris Paulin, who had himself a very good year in the realm of the living, had himself 14 wins, six losses, a 331 goals against average, and 917 save percentage. A pair of shutouts as well, a very formidable foe for the Danbury Hattricks as in comes Nicola Levesque, and he sends one right into the padding of Paulin and he holds the first test is passed by the candy striped netminder for the Port Huron Prowlers. Danbury Hattrick skating from right to left on your YouTube screen donning their road whites with orange trim. Port Huron meanwhile wearing their home blacks with red and white candy cane style striping up and down their sleeves. Hattricks have undergone a few changes to their wardrobe here for their road kid as that pass is intercepted and not come the hat tricks. The hat tricks have white buckets on their heads, which you might be thinking to yourself, that should be natural, but you know, the hat tricks had black buckets on the road, if only just because they only had one pair of helmets. And the other chain is Federley carries it ahead on the right side. And the one timer gets rifled wide. Is that the hat tricks actually will be going with white gloves here on the road? Very similar to that of the Vegas Golden Knights, who have white and gold gloves in their road kit. Carrying it ahead is Carter Shinkarik on the right side, has a pair of defenders swarming him. He'll be forced into the corner. His back pass is intercepted by Nickel. And up come the Port Huron Prowlers. Graham crosses the opposing blue line. And on Atwell, crosses the way over to Young. Young has his stick lifted from behind by Bush Anderson, still gets a shot off, and that one's turned aside by McGuckett. Passes one-handed away by Port Huron. Out to the point. Young keeps it in down low. 
Young over to Nipper. Crossing to the slot, and that's a blocker saved by McGuckin. Bush Anderson will pick it up, get it up the boards to Ruiz, and he'll carry it out of danger. Ruiz has reinforcements joining him in the form of Steve Brown and Johnny and Shane Morrissey. That shot gets turned aside by Pollen. A big open ice hit by Phil Bronner knocks a man down to the ice. Bronner now from the far side circle gets a backhander. That's covered up by Pollen, and he holds. Well, the physicality was on full display last night as with the collision physics in this game, a lot of hits make players look like the inflatable blow-up dancer outside of car dealerships. And in that particular instance, Phil Bronner came in like a bull in a china shop. Faceoff will be to the right of Paulin. It will be Portillo and Dearson going up against one another in the faceoff dot. Dearson has Anderson to his left and Gaffer to his right. Tied up in the dot and taken away by the Prowlers, who were excellent on the faceoff dot last night. Probably because there are so many non-natural centers taking faceoffs from Hatchers. You've got Casper Dearson, who's normally a winger, taking the draw, and you've got Mattias Kasich taking draws. Billy McCreary liking to mix things up here a little bit on the forward lines, trying to get some guys to improve on their face-offs, and what better way than by game experience. Here's a pass out to the slot that Portillo is handcuffed by. Portillo still regaining possession. Now Gavrick will take it away and carry it out into the neutral zone. Gavrick crosses the opposing blue line. Meandering towards the net, now a back pass for Martin Tuma, who will glide ahead. Tuma looping it around, trying for the wraparound shot. That's a glove saved by Paul. Nice little wraparound, some smooth skating there from Martin Tuma. You don't see him take too many offensive chances. Here's Portillo in the corner, trying to flip it out towards the slot. That play was highly successful. Here's Robertson out in front of a score! Portillo, rinse, wash, and repeat. A pass from the corner out to the front of the hat trick's net. And the Port Huron Prowlers take an early one to nothing lead. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Portillo once more able to capitalize from in front of the Hattrick's net. He's left all alone by Martin Tuma and Kenny Garrett in front of the same defensive pairing that failed to cover a pair of goals in the first period last night against this line. Zulkanich gets it down low to Robertson behind the end line, and Robertson, all he has to do is wait for his man to be ready, and Portillo is right there. That is the automatic scoring play in this style of hockey. So now for the second time in a row, the Danbury Hattricks will have to play from behind. Here's Kasich wiring a wrist shot. That's turned aside by Paul. Kendall Bull and Porter now in the corner. Looking to set up in front, and that one's turned out. The shot by Mealy was stopped by Paul. And so trying to take a page out of the playbook for the Port Huron Prowlers. Unsuccessful on that particular attempt, but the right idea. Fowler out to Stoya. Taken away and off to the races. Here comes Mattias Kasich, breaking in on Paul and Kasich's shot. Blocker save by Paulin. Mattias Kasich was breaking in unencumbered. Now back the other way. Here comes Port Huron. Back pass. Arnett trying to cross the way. Arnett, a former Danburyan himself, getting it out to Fowler at the far side circle. Fowler wires it down low. They score. It'll be Jonathan Giuliano getting credit for the goal as the Port Huron Prowlers take a two-goal lead. Well, this all starts because of a failed breakout for the Danbury Hattricks. They seemingly have the puck corralled. They lose the handle on it. And once more, Giuliano is left unchecked in front of the Hattricks net. You would think with the way that the Port Huron Prowlers are dressed, the Danbury defense would be able to play Where's Waldo and try to find the man in front of McGuckin. Once more left uncovered. And the Prowlers make them pay. Taking a few too many chances, and now Port Huron leads by two. They had a pair of two goal leads last night, though. They led 2-0 heading into the third period, and then 3-1 midway through the third period, and they squandered both of those leads. And the Hattricks were able to come from behind. Well, they'll have to have a bit of that same fighting spirit in them tonight, as the right-handed Aaron Atwell carries it across the blue line. Atwell. Forced into the corner, out to the slot Levesque to Bush Anderson. Bush Anderson down low, looking for the redirection, goes off the side of the net. Looked like that was Phil Bronner waiting for it on the doorstep. Moroso entering in on the hat tricks as a man streaking to the front of the net and Young. Dalton J over to Joe Pace and his shot kicked out by McGuckett. Aaron Atwell slinging it up the ice to Levesque, looking across the way for Shinkarek. It's broken up. Shinkarek knocks Arnett down, gets it over to Levesque. Levesque is in turn checked off the puck. 
It's a nice check there by Carter Shankarek, mowing down Arnett like a snowplow on a slushy road. Now here's a chance for Young as he skates in towards McGuckin and thinks better of it. Gets a little gun shy and elects to pass it back to the blue line instead. Now here's Young at the point, crossing to Contrat. A long shot is held by McGuckin and he covers with 4.48 to go in the period. Well, going back to this shot by Joe Pace, he really doesn't have a whole lot to shoot at because McGuckin cuts it off. His only opportunity is try to aim for Moroso's stick and McGuckin gets a blocker on it. It's a terrific stop there by the Hattrick's netminder as the faceoff will be to his left, Dalton Jay, going up against Casper Dearson. Tied up in one, back to Corey Anderson on the left wing. Anderson, quick passing up to Dearson on the left side. Dearson looking to the net, shoulder save, Paulin, a rebound bouncing around in front, and Paulin is able to freeze it, and the Hattricks will get an attacking zone draw. I can't get over these sleeves for the Port here on Prowlers, by the way. They look like Santa's elves. I half expect Paulin, instead of his mask, he should be having like pointy ears and like the, the, the green hat. Perhaps some jingly bells to go along with it. I don't know, it's, it's an aesthetic. Think about it, Chris. Get back to me on that one. One back to the point. Here's Garrett crossing to Tuma. Pitch and catch. Kenny Garrett winds and fires. It's blocked in front. Now Gavrick turning around with it. Gets it back to the blue line. Anderson out to Gavrick once more. Down low for Thierson. He scores! An absolute laser beam off the stick of Casper Thierson. And the hat tricks are on the board. It's 2-1. to one. Well, this whole thing is set in motion by the former collegiate teammate of Casper Dearson, Corey Anderson. The Manhattanville Valiant gets it up the boards to Vlad Gavrik, who in turn slings it over to Dearson, who rockets one blocker side past Paul, and it looked like that one went top shelf. And Dearson, the ghost, is able to haunt the Port Huron Prowlers and get the hat tricks on the scoreboard. They have halved the deficit. So already a better start for the Hattricks in this contest. They had to wait until the final frame in last night's game in order to find the back of the net. As there's a play down low for Zolkanich, he bumps into McGuckin. Play kept alive. Now Robertson has it at the midboards. Out to the point. Parsons takes a check from Bowlin Porter. Two and a half minutes to go in the period. Vartian and out to Parsons. His shot saved by McGuckin. Bounces into the net, but it's waved off. We'll take another look, see what they're looking at. This long shot by... Parsons, I believe this goes off of the Tukas of Portillo. Portillo has his honk-a-tonk -tonk, tonk in the way. Kenny Garrett's trying to block him out. I believe, are they trying to say that it got kicked in by Portillo? Because I don't think that's the case. I think this should be a clean goal. We'll see what the official ruling is, and yes, sir. Portillo will get credited with the goal, or rather I should say his backside his primary asset, so to speak, will get credit for the goal. A very Doug Gladian goal at that. Sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good, but sometimes you have to be good to be lucky, and Portillo has been a thorn in the hat-trick side all series, and he continues to do damage, both with the stick and with every possible appendage of his body. And now once more, the Hattricks will have to come back from down 3-1 to one, as here's a setup in front. That one stymied by McGuckin, and he freezes the puck over on the left side post. Good chance there for Port Huron, and Billy McCurry and company will have to get back to work with less than a minute to go here in the first period. They trail by two. It'll be Jay and Bronner in the dock. Brown and Listmayer will play pitch and catch. This mayor up to Shane Morrissey, and now he'll lead the charge ahead. Morrissey over to Bronner. Bronner's long wrist shot, seen all the way by Paul, and he'll cover with 9.9 .9 to go in the first frame. Bronner will come give him, will share an intimate moment over by the side of the Port Huron Prowler's net as there's a shot that's covered up by Paul, and you can see this look to the net. Not a whole lot of room to work with. Bronner was being forced wide. It was a good defensive play by Port Huron, forcing him over to the circle. But we've seen wonkier angles result in goals in this series. Face-off won by Port Huron. Fighting for the puck over the circle. We'll have a delayed call coming up. A hooking call will be assessed against Arnett. We'll take another look at the infraction from number 77. As right off the face-off, Arnett came together, got his... 
well, I want to say he got his stick up into the midsection of Bronner, but it appeared that his stick disappeared into the midsection of Phil Bronner. So his ghost stick will be called for hooking. Bush Anderson feeds the one-timer for Aaron Atwell. That one's turned aside by Paul, and one more try by Bunnell is sent wide, and that will do it for the first, but the Hattricks will have a power play carrying over into the second period. Well, I made reference to the fact that last night's hook and call on Steve Mealy was, I believe the exact terminology I used was Ghostbusters Stay, Pu Stay Puff Marshmallow Soft. I didn't realize that an actual ghost stick would be used to create a penalty here in the late first. Nevertheless, at the end of 20 minutes, it's a 3-1 port here on Prowler's lead. We'll be back for live coverage of the second in just a moment. Fans on their feet, and why shouldn't they be? The Port Huron Prowlers take a 3-1 lead into the second period. Hattricks have a chance to jump out of the gate early. With a power play, they'll have Bunnell, Shinkarik, and Levesque. Bush Anderson and Atwell will round out the power play unit for the Danbury Hattricks. Countering on the forecheck for the Port Huron Prowlers as Levesque gets a shot that's blockered out by Pauling. Countering on the forecheck will be Portillo and the human scrabble board, Zulkanich. Bush Anderson glides up on the left side. And swiftly up the ice to Gordy Bennell, who drops it back for Shinkara. Here's Bennell to Levesque. Crossing the way, a one-time shot is blocked in front. It looked like that one was blocked by Joe Pace. Now Atwell to Levesque to Shinkarik. Shinkarik enters in on the left wing, has Atwell streaking to the net. Levesque will set the screen. Levesque's shot, excuse me, Shinkarik's shot is blocked by Paul. Out to Shinkarik once more, crossing to Benel. 20 seconds to go in the power play. Here's Shinkarik. Tosses it back and forth with Bush, Bush Anderson. Shinkarik going sharp side, that goes high and wide. Now a stuff and try attempt by Levesque is turned out by Paul. Power play is over. Out of the box comes Arnett, and he breaks up that pass. Now here's Levesque with a sharp angle try. That one's once more steered aside by Paula. Holding firm on that goal line. Now Portillo on the left wing. Portillo dancing around an invisible defender, and that creates an offside, a bit too fancy for his own good. We'll take another look at this shot here by Levesque. Levesque had a couple of good offensive chances on that shift, making things happen, and in this particular one, looks for the far side corner, and Paulin is able to get a blocker on it. Not sure that would have hit the 6x4 opening regardless, but Paulin does the right thing and punches it out of the air. Now up the left side, Federley. Federley centers it, a long slap shot is snagged out of the air by Tom McGook, and then he holds. You know, I have never seen a hockey goaltender ever do that motion. It's one of the more common animations for this hockey game, but I have never once seen a goaltender slam his pads with the paddle of his stick. I'm not sure anyone does it. Up come the hat tricks. Morrissey will glide over towards his own bench. Ruiz collides with Federley, a pair of 19s coming together, and it looks like this will be a penalty coming up. Another hooking call. Hooking seems to be the popular infraction of choice for the officiating crew in this weekend. Let's take another look at it. Federley throws an elbow, and that time you can actually see a stick come into the midsection. I believe that was closer to a slash than it was a hook. But far be it from me to tell these virtual referees how to do their job. They don't get paid enough as it is. As far as I'm concerned, I don't believe they get paid whatsoever. They are just inanimate objects. Bush Anderson, Morrissey, Bronner down low. That's stuffed away by Paul. Parsons to Jay, who flicks it up out of the air. An athletic play to glove it down by the ambidextrous Aaron Atwell. Now Ruiz will play it ahead. Ruiz fighting for the puck with Parsons. Parsons will sky it up into the air, and this will go down the length of the ice. Bush Anderson holds behind his own end line, halfway through this power play. Braun up to Morrissey, who enters in with Ruiz behind him. Morrissey. Spins around at the circle, back to the point. Bush Anderson takes a step in, crosses to Atwell, now down low to Bronner. Bronner has a man setting a screen in front of Ruiz, doing battle in front of Paul and Bronner. Keeping it on the outside, Atwell playing the perimeter. Morrissey and Bush Anderson, quick passing back and forth. Now Atwell taking a few steps in along the board. Banks it off the wall to Bronner, pass out in front intended for a man in Johnny Ruiz is broken up, and that will do it. An uneventful power play for the Danbury Hattricks. 
Betterly will simply dump it in deep. Graham will be the first to retrieve. Graham takes a high hit from Aaron Atwell. Collides with his own man in Graham. Now Graham retains possession of the puck. Out to Young for a long slap shot. That's blocked in front. A rebound try is smothered by McGuckin, and he holds. Well, a good job by McGuckin freezing that puck. That was a long shift for the Danbury defense. They were out there for a while. Each netminder trading quality saves us. Here's one by Paul, and Ruiz has the puck in down low. Paul and squeezes the wickets, and he's able to keep that puck from crossing through the five hole. Fowler and Deerson in the dot to the right of McGuckin. One by Deerson. Crosses over to Listmay. Rattles it around the perimeter of the boards. They simply flick it over to each other. Very crisp tape to tape passing here in this one for the Hattricks, but Gavrick is bumped into and taken away. Here comes Fowler. Leaves the puck behind him. You forgot something there, bud. Contrato crosses to Young. Over to Fowler in the corner. Out to. Contrato once more to Giuliano in between the hash marks. His shot blocker to side by McGuckin. Now Dearson will pick it up. Dearson over to his right to Gavrick. Now Anderson. Anderson evades a stick check. Has it on his backhand. Back pass to Kenny Garrett. Now over to Tuma. Two defenders playing keep away with the puck. Once more to Tuma. Down low. Looking for Gavrick. Garrett, quick passing. There's a whole lot of puck movement and not a whole lot of shooting lanes open right now for the Danbury Hatricks. They simply seem to be playing hot potato. Tuma looking for Deerson down low, intercepted by the Prowlers. Well, the Hatricks focused a bit too much on their pass completion percentage and not so much on their shooting percentage. You don't need to complete a ton of passes in order to score. I mean, just ask Jimmy Garoppolo, who was six for eight in the NFC Championship game and still was able to dominate the Green Bay Packers and out to a Super Bowl berth. A lesson can be learned there from Jimmy G. Portillo and Kasich in the dot. Portillo wins it back to the high slot, Vartiani. Over to Zolkanich. Once more limited to the blue line. Parsons, Zolkanich. And they're trying to force them out into the neutral zone. Parsons and Zakanish. Good east to west movement by the part of the Port Huron Prowlers. But Kasich gets it up to Tuma. Tuma over to Mealy, who carries it ahead. Has Bolin Porter ahead of him. Bolin Porter to Mealy. Mealy now to Bush Anderson. Has a shooting lane. Winds, fires, and scores! Ethan Bush Anderson with his first goal as a Danbury hat trick. Well, Bush Anderson is able to fire the cannon from the high slot. Had himself a perfect pass out to his skates. Tees it up and beats Paul and Blocker side. That is his first goal since January 17th, back when he was a member of the Battle Creek Rumblebees. And he lets the big dog eat on that one, looking like Kevin Costner in Tin Cup. Tees it up and lets it fly. Just like that, the hat tricks only trail by one. It's a 3-2 game with less than seven minutes to go in the second. We got a delayed call coming up, and once again, what a shock. Raise your hand if you're surprised. It's a hooking call, and, and Dalton Jay is not moving. He is completely stagnant. His body has gone into stasis. Perhaps he was having a Vietnam flashback. We're unsure. He was able to eventually make his way over to the penalty box and slam his stick against the wall aggressively. Well, the first stage of Vietnam flashbacks and PTSD is shock, and then you go into rage and uncontrollable bouts of anger and frustration. So we'll have to check in on his psychological state a bit later on in this contest. Here's Levesque entering in. Levesque's wrist shot is a kick saved by Paul, and a rebound trickles over by the end line. Levesque fighting for it. Joe Pace gets it back to his net monitor. Young tries to clear. Fans on it. Now Nippard will finish the job. Halfway through the power play. Well, that, that minute really flies by, doesn't it? That almost seems like it's not a minute whatsoever. Levesque in on the right side. Levesque knocked down to his knees by Joe Pace. Buck rattling around the boards. Pinching in is Steve Brown. Now to Levesque. Levesque out to Listmay. Over to Shinkarik for a one-time shot. That's a stop by Paul and a rebound try. Another save by Paul and he holds. Less than five minutes to go in the period. Eight seconds to go in the power play. Shinkarik gets tied up now with Joe Pace. Shinkarik creates a couple of different opportunities for himself. This one in particular, he doesn't really have much of an angle, just fires that one right into the fluffy pillows on the legs of Chris Paulin. 
And with eight seconds to go on the power play, it'll be Bronner, Morrissey, and Ruiz. Here's Bronner going up in the faceoff dot, trying to win it for the Hattricks, unable to. The Prowlers are able to clear it away. Puck takes a lively bounce off the end boards, out to the middle of the zone. Up come the Hattricks. Bronner in on the left side, forced wide, out to the slot, Morrissey. Bronner turns around and fires, and snagging it in the webbing of his glove is Paul, and then he holds. A reminder to follow at Danbury Hattrix on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube if you like what you're hearing. Well, I first question your judgment and your sanity, but I second implore you to follow us across all social media platforms so you can get more highlights, exclusive interviews, behind the scenes footage, and more. Be sure to go to youtube.com slash Danbury Hattrix or just follow our social media accounts, especially our Twitter at Danbury Hattrick, the most prolific purveyor of memes in the FPHL. Here's Mealy chipping it down low, and they score! Kendall, Bolin, Porter. Shuffleboards it past Paulin, and the Hattricks have tied it up at three. What a feed that is from Steve Mealy. He's forced along the boards and is able to get it out in front. A centering pass doing damage in an NHL video game. What do you know? Bolin Porter is able to weave that through the five hole of Paulin. Terrific chance there for KBP. You down with KBP? Yeah, you know me. 55 evens up the score. Just under three minutes gone by in the second, excuse me, just under three minutes left in the third, in the second period, if I can speak. I might be having a stroke. Check back at me. Listen, it's it's late. I'm tired. Bowling Porter to Kasich turns around and a flashy glove saved by Paul and then he holds. I think it's because I'm doing this game in pajama pants. Like, it's, we've downgraded even further. Yesterday was in sweatpants. I at least, like, was trying to fool myself into thinking that I looked like a presentable human being. Tonight, I'm, uh, I'm just in it. I'm in PJs. And I think that it's just a, a mindset that if you are in pajamas, your brain doesn't have to work. It doesn't have to function properly. So for that, I apologize. Bronner kicks it out to Bush Anderson. These men are not wearing pajamas, although it does look like it from the look of the Port Huron Prowler sweaters. They do like, look like comfy little PJ sweaters. Zolkanich in on the right side. Back pass intended for Arnett. Arnett and Stoya dishing the puck back and forth. Long shot blocked in front. Bush Anderson picks it up, tries to force it ahead. 20 seconds remaining in the period. Bush Anderson with one last rush up ice for the hat tricks. Bush Anderson has a goal already under his belt. Into the corner, centering pass from Morrissey. Morrissey slides it over to Ruiz, but he fanned on the shot. It looked like Graham got a stick on it and broke it up. Ooh, Morrissey had a clean shooting lane. You gotta take that shot there. A bit too unselfish. But we head into the second intermission. All tied up at three. The hat trick's trying to come from behind for the second time in this series. Ethan Bush Anderson has the Second goal for the Hattricks, Kendall Bowen Porter has the third. We'll be back for live coverage of the third period here on the Under Reviews YouTube channel. It's a much different story heading into the third period. Tonight, as opposed to last night, as the Hattricks lead in shots, they lead in hits, they lead in time on attack. They've played a much cleaner game here tonight. But they still find themselves deadlocked after a sloppy start against the Port Huron Prowlers. Will we find a difference maker here in the third period, or will we once more have extra time as Chris Pollen magnetically is pulled over by the end boards? We'll see perhaps if there is a Wiley Coyote giant magnet trying to pull Paul. That would be a new technique. I have never seen that before on the hockey rink, although I have to think that that would be counterintuitive, seeing as every player has metal on their feet, not just the netminder. And come to think of it, there isn't really a whole lot of extra added metal on that netminder, although it, I suppose it depends on what the piping on their cage is, is made of or perhaps they're considering the buckles on their leg pads. I might be overthinking this just a little bit, but it's worth considering. You have to think of how, how can you possibly cheat in hockey, aside from putting like foil under your gloves, as Graham gets it back to Young. The Houston Astros played hockey 
how would they try to win hockey? What would be the equivalent of sign stealing in hockey? Mention in the comments because I'm genuinely curious what people think. Anyway, Graham and Nippert enter in. Graham with a clean look to the net. That's a stop by McGuckin. A rebound gets squibbed wide. A one-hand interruption by Gordy Bennell. He carries it up the ice, dishes it over to Ruiz on the right side. Ruiz has Young in front of him, stops short. A long pass out to Bush Anderson, and his shot is, masked, is a masked save by Paul. Ruiz, far side circle. Out to Atwell, to Bush Anderson. Bush Anderson is run into by Joe Pace. Still able to retain possession of the hat tricks, but now Young takes it away. Here comes Joe Pace on the right wing. Long pass over to Moroso on the left side. Moroso knocked off by Johnny Ruiz. It was Parsons now keeping it in. Moroso. Moroso now over to Young, crossing to Parsons. Quick passing, Portillo to Moroso between the hash marks. Again, another shot from the slot that teams just don't seem to want to take. I suppose the AI knows best, but it seems to me like there are a lot of prime scoring opportunities being passed up on both sides. I think it's like a game of horse where they can't shoot from a certain area. They have to call their shot first. Here's Zolkanich on the right side. Zolkanich with Portillo. Zolkanich loses the handle on the puck and it goes into the corner. Zolkanich out to Parsons. Along the boards, down low behind the net to Portillo. Evades a couple of checks, turnaround shot. That one's gloved out of the air by McGuckin, and he holds. Well, a couple of Danbury hat tricks went to throw a hit behind the net on Portillo, but Portillo is slippery like an eel behind the hat trick's net. Able to evade a couple of different checks. As here's the shot by Graham earlier in the period, and the rebound try got sent wide. It's a good job by McGuckin there to control the rebound. Faceoff will be to the netminder's right. One by Port Huron. Juliano looking for Vartianen at the near side point. Crosses to Parsons. His slap shot is rejected Matumbo style out into the neutral zone. Oh, no, 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 says Vlad Gavrik. Now Gavrik takes the puck away over by the Port Huron bench. Has Dearson in front of the net. Out to Garrett. Crosses to Tuma. Down low. Dearson looking across the way. Here's a shot by Gavrik. He scores! A change-up shot by Vlad Gavrik sneaks by Chris Paulin's legs, and the Hattricks have the lead. Well, this is a pass from the circle across the slot. There's that Royal Road coming into play once more, and Gavrik doesn't even really look like he got the full weight behind that shot. I'm not quite sure what Chris Paulin was doing on that play. You know what? This could be the play of the Magnet. This could be where the Magnet came into play. We talked about how Paulin was seemingly drawn to the boards at the start of the period. Perhaps on that play, he was drifting into the net, collapsing over by the wall because there was a man with a giant Wiley Coyote Magnet behind the end line. We cannot confirm, nor can we deny. We'll keep an eye on that as play progresses. Here's Giuliano now on the left wing. Giuliano takes a hit, loops it around roulette style over to Stoya. Stoya has his pass knocked away, but it finds its way over to Giuliano. Now Stoya to Arnie. Download of Fowler. Fowler is able to carve through the Danbury defense from one side to the other. Gavrick runs him into the boards, takes the puck away, and gets it up to Corey Anderson. Anderson. Deeks his way to the right side, takes a check, loses control of the puck. Fowler picks it up and carries it up for Port Huron. Eight and a half minutes to go in regulation time. Port Huron looking for an answer. Down low to Graham in the corner. Out to Fowler at the midboards. Fowler takes a big high hit from Steve Brown. Looks like Brown's arms came up a bit, and there's a kick save by McGuckin out into the corner. Now Mattias Kasich carrying it ahead. Has Mealy and Bowen Porter with him. Back pass for Brown. Brown's trailing shot. Brown just got flipped over. All six foot four, 240 of Steve Brown just got suplexed into the ice. By God! Somebody stopped the damn match. He got broken in half. Here's Mealy with a chance now as Paulin goes meandering back towards his net there. As if drawn to the goal line. Very suspicious. Here's Graham now entering in on the right side on Steve Brown, who has somehow put himself back together again and gotten out onto the ice. Here's a shot that's frozen by McGuckin. Oh, no, keep it alive and pass it ahead, and up come the hat tricks. 
Levesque to Bunnell to Kasich. Kasich's wrist shot. He scores! Tic-tac-toe passing and Kasich caps it off. He gets an insurance goal with less than five minutes to go in regulation time. The Hattricks have their biggest lead of the weekend. That is to say it expands on their only lead of the weekend as Kasich takes the brilliant feed. This line successful once again. He's able to square to the net on the rush. And I'm sure that's one that Paulin would like back. He anticipated the pass going over to Kasich and Kasich was still able to snipe it by him. What a shot. So the Hattricks now have a two-goal cushion on the Port Huron Prowlers, trying to hold on for what would be their first regulation win against Port Huron this season. Here's Shinkara, leaving it for Bunnell, back to Atwell. Atwell gets it down low to Shinkarik. Shinkarik evades his tick check, now back out once more to Atwell. Shinkarik shot, gloved by Pauling. Atwell doing a great job of moving the puck, and not to harp on it, but Atwell is well, playing from the other side, he's a switch stick handler, almost like Pat Venditti, the former Oakland Athletics pitcher who was a switch pitcher. Made headlines for being ambidextrous, would switch batter to batter. An ambidextrous, or as one newspaper put it, an amphibious pitcher. Nice little malapropism there. Levesque behind the end line loses the handle. Prowlers trying to escape, they do. Up to the right wing, it's Graham. Excuse me, that's Joe Pace entering in on the right side. Joe Pace winds and fires, and a windmill saved by Tom McGuckin. Put a little English on that one. As he flares that one out of the air, perhaps he's trying to send a message. And there's Joe Pace laying the hammer down on Aaron Atwell. Aaron Atwell went head first down into the ice, appears to be okay. The second time, normally the strongest defensive pair for the Danbury Hatricks, Aaron Atwell and Steve Brown have the most physicality being enforced on them so far in this game. Less than two minutes to go here in regulation time. Ruiz out to the point to Atwell. Ruiz looking for Morrissey, chips it wide. Now out to the neutral zone. Contrato over to the left wing, will keep an eye on Paul and he heads to the bench. Now out to Young between the hash marks. Pace's shot is blocked in front. A rebound cleared out by the Hattricks but not out of the zone just yet. Six on five with a minute to go in regulation time. The Prowlers need two. Here's a shot that's a glove save by McGuckin, and he freezes. Tom McGuckin holding firm. He's flashing that leather. Just be careful that you don't do any Patrick Waugh Statue of Liberty showing the crowd that you've got it. Listmayer up the right wing. An empty net awaiting ahead. A long shot sent wide. Election finder a bit off there for the Hattricks, and up comes Zolkanich with new life. Zolkanich crossing the way, Robertson save, McGuckin, a rebound try, another save, McGuckin. Now another try out to Portillo, that one's a shoulder save, McGuckin. A flurry of saves for number 30. Now once more, Gavrick's shot is blocked by Young. 20 seconds to go. Up the left wing, here's Jay with Robertson. Jay switches places. Jay waits, fires, and scores! A juicy rebound out in front, and Robertson caps it off. It's 5-4. to four. Well, Dalton J shot low. McGuckin kicked it out, and someone called the notorious B.I.G. because that rebound was juicy. Robertson is able to poke it home. Well, hold on to your hats. Never say never. Anything is possible. They do still have a little bit of time to work with. They will need a face-off win and to immediately carry it into the zone. We're getting ready for the final face-off of the game. And it looks like we have another pause. This could be a timeout taken by Joe Pace. A very brief one. He just wanted to tell his players, do your thing. And away they go. Here comes Portillo. Looking towards the net, shoots it off the end boards. Trying to dump it in. Portillo throws a big check, but the Hattricks will keep the puck away. Two seconds and one. That will do it. The Danbury Hattricks hang on for a 5-4 regulation victory. They beat the Port Huron Prowlers in regulation time for the first time this season. Tom McGuckin holds firm. He fends off a third period surge. And the Hattricks take this one 5-4. A couple of fortuitous goals in the third period. Vlad Gavrick with the snipe of the century. I think that one might have gone a whole 30 miles an hour. 
beating Chris Pullen for the fourth goal of the game. Matthias Kasich with the deciding fifth goal for the Hattricks, flexing his stick, completely bending it like it's a wet piece of spaghetti. Beating Paul in glove side, and that will seal the victory for the Hattricks. We want to thank everyone for tuning in to the under review simulation of Hattricks hockey. I'm Casey Bryant, wishing you good day and good health.